What's up? So a few months ago, Offensive Security put out one of the new courses. This one was called Pen 300 or Evasion Techniques and Breaching Defenses. And it came with the certification OSEP or Offensive Security Experience Penetration Tester. So I took a look at the course online and I bought it right away. Like I was stoked because this course looked awesome. It looked so cool. It said an advanced penetration testing course, building on the knowledge and techniques taught in the penetration testing with Kali Linux course or PWK that works with OSCP. And it teaches students to perform advanced penetration tests against mature organization with an established security function. You would learn how to bypass defenses, perform advanced attacks while avoiding detection, and compromise systems that are already configured with security in mind. So we're talking about phishing with Microsoft Office documents. We're talking about process injection and migration, antivirus evasion, bypassing application whitelisting, post exploitation, credentials, lateral movements, a ton of cool stuff and an active directory environment. So I bought the course the moment that it came out. I registered for the exam the moment that I could. And throughout the past few days, I was taking the exam and today, I got an email notification that I passed. Yes. I was really nervous for this test. I thought that I was gonna fail. I thought I was gonna have to retake it. I thought I was gonna have to take it like a second time because I just failed it that bad. Uh, honestly, I did not expect for it to go the way that it did. Uh, but I wanted to bring this video to you because I think it's very, very new and there are a lot of questions out there. So this is it, here it is. This is my video for the OSEP review. I wanna make this video like helpful for you. So I asked out on the internet, like, I posted on LinkedIn, I posted on Twitter, hey, what would you like me to talk about or what would you like to see discussed during this OSEP video review? So hopefully I'll be able to answer some of your questions and we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, I kinda of wanna give a little bit of a timeline as to how this course and what this really looked like for me. So I had bought the course as soon as I could, right? The day that it launched, I was super excited. I'm loving what Offsec is doing lately and this sort of stuff I want to get better at. I want to learn more and get sharper on that. So I bought the course as soon as I could, but I wasn't able to start with the labs and the course materials and really get into it until about the 21st of November. So from that week, like on that Saturday and throughout that weekend, I was like hard charging. I would watch every single video. I would take as many notes as I could. And I was staying up until like three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning, just so I could absorb everything. So when they give you the course material, the video files that they give you are labeled in like the section of the course and then the module and then the lesson and then just numbers within that. Uh, that wasn't exactly useful to me. So I went through the process, like while I was going through all the course videos, I, I would rename them to be in chronological order and then what they were actually discussing or what they were teaching within that section. So later down the line, if I needed to during the exam, I could reference the video and actually see it showcase and be able to quickly search and get what I needed. Uh, while I was taking all my notes on all that, I was practically recreating the course book, but in my own like words and in my own understanding. And that way I could copy and paste any code blocks that I was writing. And that made it much more easily referenceable, a, a little bit better than what the course book and that PDF, you can't quick and easy copy and paste code out of that because it gets messy. But that was what I had done to get started in that regard. I was trying to like speed run the course until about Thanksgiving. And then when we get to December, right, then we get to the holiday time. Like I was going on vacation, I think the very, very first week. And then of course we had Christmas, right? As we get close to the holiday and I've got family coming up. So like December was kind of a wash. And then when we came to January, at that point I felt like I'm like, I'm running out of time. Uh, my lab was going to expire on the 20th and my exam was scheduled to start on the 31st. So up until I think like the 15th, I had still just been kind of like busy doing other work. Like this month was super duper busy for my actual day job. Um, but then as we came closer to exam time, like, all right, I really got to hunker down. I really just got to cram the stuff. So I tried to work through all the labs and I got into about lab time or exam time, sorry. So for the 31st of January, um, from what I understand, the 
course exam wasn't going to be released until February 1st. And I thought like, how the heck am I taking this on January 31st when it's not even out yet? So uh, it, it's because I'm Eastern time, right? So the time zone difference. But when my exam started at 10 p.m. January 31st, that means I had the 48 hours to take the exam. So all of Monday, February 1st, and then all of Tuesday, right, February 2nd. And now today we get to when I get my exam results. So <laughs> I am pretty sure I'm the first person to take the OSEP exam and I'm the first person to get that certification. I think, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but that's kind of cool. <laughs> anyway, let me show you my notes or I, like my note taking process. Obviously I can't show you like my real notes cause it's hey part of the course. Um, but I'll show you kind of the workflow that I work through. So I have an OSEP directory, right? And that's how I kind of go ahead and connect to the VPN. I've got all the course material in there and then I continue to work inside of a GitHub repository. Now this is something that I've stressed before, but I can't stress enough. When you're working through this, back up your stuff. In case you lose it, you don't really want to have to go through that all again. So create a private repository for yourself so you can just easily just, hey, get push and get your stuff up, backed up somewhere. Make sure it's private, obviously. Uh, but I would totally, totally recommend that. And that is inside my workspace directory. So inside this, and I think it's totally cool to show you this because there's nothing exactly sensitive here. Um, just a bunch and bucket dump of tools and the stuff that I had created and stuff that I'd made a just random grab bag of assortments and stuff. You can see like random interpreter shells in there or other things or other notes. Uh, but the big one here is this readme file. So that readme.md is literally my entire dump of everything that I have taken notes on throughout the course while going through the videos. So if I were to like take a look at how big this file is, there's a lot of lines in there, right? And that's not even all of it. I actually didn't go through some stuff that I it just went on later and didn't end up documenting personally. Uh, but that is how I had done it originally. That's how I done it to start with. I just had this humongous markdown file that I threw all my stuff in. Now, I don't know how you guys take notes and I know that's different for everyone, um, but I will showcase and I will kind of offer this. If you haven't seen Obsidian, it's so cool. It's so good. I love it. I would totally recommend that if some folks are interested in, hey, just I'm still taking notes in Markdown, but I still want to slap in images and I want to be able to easily look for and through and grab what I might need. So I'll show you that. I'll fire up Obsidian right now um, and I'll show you what I can. Okay, so here we are. This is the folder that I had used and created for everything that I might be looking up and grabbing for uh, OSEP while I'm taking everything down there. I had my folder and no for, for the challenges. I would kind of keep track of what I could be thinking of when I get to a certain point. I could be looking for specific things in different references. Hey, what do I need to do if I land on a Linux box and I need to remember like a gut check, what's going on? What if I run into some SQL servers? What tools do I need to pull in and how am I gonna end up doing that? Uh, lateral movement, right? Other techniques and things that we're working with those phishing documents or macros, et cetera, et cetera. And this is beautiful and wonderful because I could just simply hate control O and just search for something that I might need. Like, hey, I want to grab the quick syntax to disable Defender, or I need to quickly get a PowerShell downloader for some specific tool like Rubius or PowerView or Bloodhound, et cetera. Uh, just having all these things readily accessible for me at like a keystroke was fantastic and awesome and still just acted as a good sanity check. Um, so if you aren't using Obsidian, it's super duper cool. Uh, you can create like another pane. I'll split vertically, right? And I'll make this in like the markdown view that's necessary to have that display nice and pretty. And uh, you can also make all these references that are necessary in the graph view. Um, let me see how I can get that if I can. Uh, oh, there it is. Open local graph. Oh, and it creates like a separate pane, but like you can create a little like mind map of everything that you're taking part of in different like sections or notes. And that's super duper cool. I honestly don't use it a ton, the graph view anyway, but I just love being able to have all of the markdown files and things that I might need able to be looked up at like a second. Okay. Last thing before we get to your questions, cause I promised you I'd get to your questions. I want to talk about the exam report. Um, I submitted my exam report just like under an hour after my exam testing period ended. Now I say that because what I want to emphasize to you is write your exam report while you're taking the exam. 
And I, and I don't mean that literally, but I do. Uh, so like, I guess what I, what I try to do is I try to like write out my thoughts as I'm going through it. I'll just have like my text editor open another window and the terminal and everything like as I'm taking the exam. So like while I get a thought, like, look, I see a couple options in front of me. This is what I can do. These are the commands that I ran. And I would like literally copy and paste each command that I wrote and just slapped it into the text editor. So I had it saved. Cause then for one thing, when you know, you need that later, because oh, maybe you messed up that command or you're just going to do a similar thing again. You just need to change the arguments. You've got it. Control shift C, control shift V, plop the thing in and you're good to go. Uh, I really, really recommend that because if you get yourself to a point where you can just basically copy and paste what you've already written down in your notes while you're going through the process and you can like fine tune some sentences or whatever, you've got your report, your, your walkthrough, your write up, you show your work as you're going along, it makes it so much easier. And I know like report writing is sometimes kind of the most boring thing. So literally you won't want to do it after the fact, literally just do it while you're going through the penetration test. Just jot down either what you're thinking or what you just looked at or what you just found. Hey, I see this vulnerability with this technique. I was able to abuse it. Then you're good to go. Then you're set. Now I'm going to do something here. I'm going to do something real quick and don't get spooked. Don't get scared. Don't you worry off sec. I'm not giving any trade secrets away or anything, but I'm going to show you my exam report, what I can of my exam report, right? So basically just the front cover, um, but this is it. This is the folder. This is what I was working out of when I was working through my exam. And if I fire this thing up, I'll give you examreport.pdf. Take a gander. It is 73 pages long. Now I use a lot of screenshots, so that might be longer than what most people expect or even would care to do. But look, this is it. This is the thing. And I show this to you because I want to demonstrate how I put this thing together, right? So as I said, I write it all in Markdown. I'm not a big fan of like bumping around in Microsoft Word. I hate using those templates. I just dislike doing that. Uh, so I write it in Markdown, right? And I'll show you this template where I end up using this Ice Vogel LaTeX like style and use that template. And it's online. I think I've shared it before for even the OSCP video. So I'll throw some overlays in the video and I will uh, link that in the description because it's a good github repo where you just get whatever you need you write the thing in markdown you convert it to latex and it spits it out as a nice beautiful pdf for you so you don't have to do a whole lot of legwork with microsoft word or adobe whatever the heck to to make a pdf file uh, i love to use this and i do that for literally every offensive security exam that i've taken and even i think for for other certifications that is the way that i do it um, and i hope that is helpful for you now, finally, let's get to your questions. Um, I think I should end up doing this as sort of like a live stream at some point or an AMA or whatever, if some folks are interested in that. Uh, but anyway, these are a few of the canned ones that I had seen from Twitter and LinkedIn. So I'll try and go through these. How useful is OSEP in the course and certification? So uh, I am not currently on the market or like looking for a job, right? But obviously, yes, the classic same value and worth that comes from just getting a certification, that's obviously going to super duper help your resume when you're hunting for jobs, you're trying to bypass HR, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's value in that. Um, but for the learning, right, that's the real important stuff, in my opinion. And uh, a few of you like, no, like this sort of thing is super duper pertinent to what I do for my day job right? So I work at a company where we hunt for hackers and we're trying to look at the malware that we find. We're trying to understand and follow in the footsteps of the threat actors, see how they're maintaining their access and getting that foothold and implant in place. And a lot of the techniques, right? When you're bypassing application whitelisting, you're trying to slip under the radar for antivirus. Uh, those are super duper pertinent and it's real world stuff that real hackers are doing, right? So uh, this, this is super cool, honestly, in my opinion. I think this is like one of the greatest examples of it. I was going through the section on like compiling C Sharp on the fly without touching disk. And how you do it originally is you use like MS Build or CSC or kind of like command line C Sharp compiler. And when you use those utilities, it does write temporary artifacts to disk in like the temp directory or something. There's like random letters and like a dot zero or a dot number dot CS for the C Sharp code and other things that just 
get left out, like the standard output or the standard error of the process. And uh, I saw those at work, like doing what I really do for my job. And then the next day when I was going through that section in OSCP, I was like, whoa, <laughs> I, I literally saw that. It, it tied it all in. And that was so cool and really incredible. So it's super duper pertinent to, I think, real world stuff. And that's the value. And that's how I thought it was useful because it was really, really cutting close to the bone or like it hits close to home, right? When you see it for what you do every day. And uh, yeah, it is useful. <laughs> how did you prepare for the OSEP exam? So I've said this before in the video, right? And I'll say it over and over again and I'll reiterate it is I, I took a lot of notes, <laughs> like a lot of notes. Uh, and I would stage everything and have it ready so I could use it in the future. Uh, my biggest recommendation, like my, my best advice that I can give you is go through the challenges, go through the challenge labs, go through every single one of them and take thorough notes. So I think my advantage or what made this like, what, what was so instrumental in helping me was that I would have the code, I would have programs, my tools, I'd have syntax, I'd have commands already staged and ready that I could just copy and paste and slap it in. So hey, do I need to use Impacket? Look, I've got it ready. Do I need to use Crack Map Exec or whatever the case may be? Do I need to throw in Rubius? I've already got it set so I can just keep rolling and I don't need to go fumbling and looking for syntax when I already have it ready and I've got that lookup for myself. That is my best recommendation is to go through the labs, go through the challenges and have that prepped. What are some materials or resources that would be really helpful for preparation or external war games or practice ranges. So uh, I have not admittedly gone through like Hack the Box uh, cybernetics or some of the pro labs. Like I know Offshore or some of the Rasta labs are much more into Active Directory than you might find in other locations. Um, I did go through Try Hack Me Throwback and that was some time ago and there's, there's a video on my channel to showcase me failing through that. Um, but I'll say, look, I have said many times before, Windows pen testing is not my strong suit. Uh, I practically never operate in an active directory environment. This was like the first time I'd done it. So when I say go through the labs, when I say do the challenges, those were what were invaluable to me. Honestly, I, I didn't end up going through some of the hack the box or try hack me other stages or other ranges. I know pen tester Academy and plenty of other stuff have things that could help you and it, certainly go after them. Certainly do them. If that's what you'd like to do. Truthfully, I hadn't yet. Um, the course is enough for what you need. The course, I think OSCP and OSEP specifically is, uh, going to teach you everything that you need. So you don't ha have to go research a lot of that other stuff. Um, I, the biggest thing that I struggled with because I'm not familiar with Active Directory and because I'm not all that confident in Windows is that I would struggle and I would be a, afraid of my own intuition. Like I wouldn't know what to do next or what to what to look for next or, or how to do that next. So at one point, and like many times actually, <laughs> I'd be like laying in my bed, just staring at my phone, looking up, uh, how to more enumerate an active directory, how to do more in a Windows realm. And I would just be trying to understand the techniques, trying to understand what tools they use and how they do it. I would just be looking at my phone in the middle of the night when I can't sleep, staring at that stuff. Uh, and that, that's really it, the research and kind of putting the puzzle pieces together throughout the lab and the challenges. How does this compare to OSCP or the Offensive Security Certified Professional? So OSCP, and I've said it before, and I and I know I know Offsec has gone out and said this. Where OSCP is one of the introductory fundamentals, beginner certifications, which sucks to hear, especially if like someone's studying crazy hard for OSCP and it's like the holy grail, like that's the gauntlet they want. Uh, it's like a throat punch <laughs> when someone tells you, "Hey, no, that's just the tip of the iceberg, man." I think that I think that rings true, right? Because OSCP focuses a lot on knowing vulnerabilities and being able to exploit them with some 
attack script or code you might be able to pull off the shelf. You just need to do the enumeration to figure out what it is that's in front of you. Okay, what software name and what software version and what can I go find in the public domain to exploit this and take advantage of it. For OSEP, you're taking advantage of things that are inherent and internal to the way that Windows works, the, the way that Active Directory is structured and part of its design, it has these flaws that you can take advantage of these things. Okay, constrained delegation, unconstrained delegation, resource-based constrained delegation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's a step above because it's, OSCP, I feel like, is very Linux-oriented, and I might be wrong in saying that now with the 2020 update, right? They focus on Active Directory a smidge, a little bit. Um, OSEP is much more real-world, and take that with a grain of salt, in that you're doing Windows stuff in environments that are secured, that are using the latest and most modern rendition of these operating systems that have credential guard in place or application whitelisting in place or have PowerShell locked down to only be in constrained language mode, stuff like that. Uh, there's just more to circumvent and navigate around. And uh, it makes more it makes for a more formidable foe. And I think that's how it differs from OSCP. OSCP, I can't say becomes a little formulaic, but OSEP, you, you do problem solving and you do critical thinking in, in different ways. Uh, but OSEP puts you in a different environment. Uh, this current one, right? The experience penetration tester puts you in more of that modern, real world, actual op all enterprises, right? All network businesses, corporations, companies, biz they're using Active Directory. That's like 99%, 95% of industry. That's where it's at. So OSCP, it's, that's the tip of the iceberg, right? OSEP can, can bump you up a little bit. That's the next level. Can we be best friends? Yeah, duh, absolutely, of course. We're, we're already best friends. Does the material help you go through the exam? If you pass the challenges, are you ready for the exam? In my opinion, yes. Everything that you need is in the course. That's why I take notes. I'm gonna say it over and over again. How long did it take you to pass the exam? Oh gosh, I hate this question. I hate, uh, this makes me just look like a, a bad word. <laughs> So my exam got started at 10 p.m. on January 31st, and I had completed the objective at 7 in the morning. So I guess if you're really counting, that that makes it nine hours. But I say that, and it, gosh, it makes me, oh, I hate, I hate, I don't want to sound like some braggadocio guy. It, I'm telling you, if you prepare, I'm telling you, if you take notes, I'm telling you, if you go thoroughly through the challenges and you have things staged out and ready, then you're unstoppable. You, you've, you're loaded up with your armor. You've got your arsenal. You are ready to rock. Uh, that, I think, was my strong suit. And the biggest advice that, I, again, I'll give you is get it locked in that all this code, all these C sharp scripts, this um, C sharp code, right? You'll compile to do specific things, PowerShell syntax to be able to interact with different things, uh, all those things ready and prepared. That is how you'll cruise through it. What are some things you would have liked to have known before taking it? Ooh, that's a good question. So, I, I tell people, yeah, it's good to be familiar with PowerShell, right? Uh, C Sharp, I feel like you can pick up just syntactically, right? It's, I mean, it's a programming language. You can just kind of get the feel for it and bump around and, and fail and fumble a little bit all again beforehand, before the exam. So when it's go time, you're ready to rock. Uh, I, I mentioned, I wish I had more of the intuition. I wish I had a grown muscle as to what to look for and when, when I'm in the Windows world inside of an Active Directory environment. Um, ooh, but I will mention this, and I, and I don't think I've said this before, so it's good that we, we get into it. Um, Bloodhound. 
Oh my goodness. So I don't often use Bloodhound, right? Or, or use any Sharp Hound or any of the other collectors to be able to pour it into Bloodhound. Look, I use Bloodhound like a compass. Like whenever I got lost in the woods, wherever I didn't know where to go next, wherever I was unsure, hey, uh, I got new access. Now what do I do with it? Go back to Bloodhound. Look around. Look through every single thing that you can. And just just poke around and say, hey, that doesn't look weird. I wonder what I could do with this. Is this is this the right group? Is this the right user? What about that computer over there? Oh, man. I would really, really recommend to folks just pl play with Bloodhound. And that is something that I wish I had a little bit more familiarity with. Uh, look, did you know you can right click on something in Bloodhound and mark it as owned or mark it as high value? I didn't know that. <laughs> if you right click on an edge, if it says, hey, you have whatever right dackle or you've got generic all on this thing, dude, if you right click on it, you check out that abuse info. If you go through the help menu, Harmjoy, forgive me. I, I'm pretty sure I got that right. Uh, the developer, right? It just does an incredible job at telling you like, look, if you want to break this thing, here's how to do it. <laughs> and using that combined with the book, combined with everything that you've learned through the course, that sets you on the right path, man. So Bloodhound, I would uh, foot stomp over and over again. I, I, I'm i putting it lightly when I say I use Bloodhound as my compass. I hope you do the same. Who would you advise this course for? Are there any types of jobs or positions or people that the certification is suited towards? So yeah, this is totally like being a modern red teamer, right? This is being a penetration tester for real, like for your actual job, for like as I mentioned, yeah, obviously 95%, 99% of businesses, companies, organizations, network systems, et cetera, they're using Windows and they're using Active Directory. So learning these techniques, knowing how to do some of the antivirus evasion, doing AMSI bypasses or working around application whitelisting, like if you want to be a penetration tester, if you want to be a hacker and do it as a job, like that is it. That this is this is who that course is for. That is who this course is for. It is experienced penetration tester for a reason. Uh, I think encapsulating it as a red teamer is the right way to think about it. Because uh, this is really what you'll be doing. Okay, I know this video is getting kind of long, so uh, we'll we'll wrap this up. We'll we'll start to wind this thing down. Uh, last question. Or I, I say like last question for like right now for this video. Uh, if you do want us to do like, hey, let's, John, can you do a live stream? Can you do an AMA or something cheesy like that? Absolutely, I'm happy to. If you've got more questions, we'll, we'll do that. And it, don't hesitate to reach out. Like don't hesitate to ask me. Hit me up. Hit me up on Discord. Hit me up on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever whatever social media platform. I am uh, drowning in, in messages and a little overwhelmed. So hopefully I'll get to you. Uh, but but no, don't be a stranger. I'm happy to help. That's totally what I'm doing this this all for. And, and I hope that this review video is helpful for you. So last question: At the end of the day, is it worth it, or was it worth it? Yes. Like, yeah, absolutely. A thousand percent hands down. Uh, maybe I'm weird. Like maybe I'm an oddball because I, I, I love this stuff, right? This is my passion. I find this fun. Um, because like hands-on learning, the practical application-based learning, like, I don't know. It makes it real. It makes it tangible. It makes it like you're, you're, you're doing it for real. You're not just, and I say this a lot, but you're not just talking about cybersecurity. You know, you're not droning on in front of a PowerPoint presentation. Or you're like pointing at a, a, a pie chart and statistics histogram. You're not talking about cybersecurity or ethical hacking, but you're doing it. You're on the keyboard, you're operating, and you're learning the real tactics, the real techniques, the real procedures. And that, being able to play with it and tinker with it. I just think that's so cool. And that's so fun. So was it worth it? Absolutely. It was absolutely worth it to me. And yeah, if, if you're, if you're wanting to advance your career, if you're trying to open up those job prospects and everything, a thousand percent, this on your resume is going to like make you skyrocket. But even if you're just doing it for the learning, just for the knowledge and the value that comes from it, I see it firsthand. This stuff is absolutely pertinent to what I do every day for my day job. And I think that is so cool. Like I remember when that happened, the whole MS build CSC thing with the temporary artifacts that blew my mind. Like what an amazing moment where I can tie it into something that I, I literally do every day. That was really cool. So, okay. 
I think that's it. I think that's all I wanted to talk about. <laughs> hey, so to close this thing out, um, I, I want to take a moment to just say thank you. Um, and it's weird, I think, but look, when I when I shared and screamed on social media, like, hey, I passed, I did it, I, I was so, so pleased. Uh, the overwhelming response of like, congratulations, you know, like the pat on the back, just the encouragement is so surreal. Uh, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm so incredibly and insanely lucky uh, because of this community, because of this following. Like, I'm blessed to sort of be in the spotlight, right? Because I'm, because I'm a content creator, because I'm an influencer, and, and in cybersecurity, right? When you put that on YouTube and that you, you make something out of it, it's weird. Like, you wouldn't normally think or expect that out of education and learning, but uh, I don't know. It, seeing that positive response was just so heartwarming and I'm so so grateful I'm lucky because I am get to be sort of in the spotlight but every single one of you every single one out there every single person should have that same encouragement and, and response and love when when they achieve something that they've been working towards so I am so excited for you to pass OSCP I am so excited to see your certificate I'm so excited to see all the achievement messages and social media postings uh, and I'm super excited for OSED, right? You know, the new offset course for Windows user mode, like exploit development and all that stuff. I'm super stoked and I'm super excited. So, you know what? We're just going to keep playing. We're going to keep having fun. We're going to keep learning and I'm, I'm happy and I'm excited and I'm stoked. So, uh, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really hope that this review video was helpful for you. Let me know. Please don't hesitate to reach out. We can keep doing more stuff like this, but golly gee, this was an absolute blast. And, uh, Thanks so much. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Love you guys. Take care. I'll see you in the next one.